Hey, hello, it's Retro Yuki. Welcome to a bonus episode of Let's Talk Indie Yuki. Today's bonus episode is going to be talking about are indie games already actually being the future of gaming? I have a big feeling in this year we're going to have more indie games than ever. And with the Indie Game Fest and Summer Game Fest coming up in June, it's a very good time to take a look at indie games. I I have a very sinking feeling that indie games are starting. I have a very good feeling that indie games are being the future. Let's talk about it. So, I have some rules for today's episode. No, no article. Instead, we're gonna be taking a look at VG Insights data, and we're gonna be answering six questions for today. I actually answered some of them already, but I'm gonna I'm going to explain my answers. So the first question is, are indie games sustainable? The second one is, can an indie game surpass a AAA game in the future? The third question is, what is the longevity of an indie game? The fourth question is, can we draw a conclusion based on data from VG Insight? Number five, why are indie games getting popular? And number six, are indie games the future of gaming? And we're gonna conclude with that question, which is the big boy question. So let's get started by talking about number one, are indie games sustainable? So when I say, when we talk about sustainability, when it comes to gaming, we're talking about player count, we're talking about consumer retention, we're talking about all those aspects of analytics. So the question is, are indie games sustainable in the current market? And I said, yes. However, there's a big catch. If and only if the game developers will be able to provide content for the game for consumers to enjoy, including like uh, extra levels, cosmetics, all those things you would think of for a triple A game, but for an indie game instead. Okay, so are they able to provide that? If they are, then the, the game in question will be sustainable. If not, then the game dies off. Okay, that's how that's how it goes sometimes, unfortunately. Question number two, can an indie game surpass a triple A game in the future? Now for this one, we have to think about an indie game in terms of sales numbers in this case, and not positive, positive to be, positive to be um, ratings here. So I said yes and no. Yes, if the game can sustain an audience for a long period of time to eventually surpass a, a triple A game, however, no, if the game cannot sell as much units in the future due to lack of content, interest, and audience. So if this is a double-edged sword when it comes to this question. On one side, yes, because if you have an audience for your game and, and the game can sustain a, a long period of time for it, then eventually a, you can pass a AAA game. However, if the game does not have enough content, or you don't have enough sales, then it dies off, including interest and audience, because when it comes to indie games, you're going to be able to have a feedback thanks to early access content unlike on Steam. So this is why it's important to market your game early. We talked about this during our market episode. So make sure you guys check that one out. Number three, number three, what is the longevity? What is an indie game's longevity in the gaming cycle? So when we're talking about longevity in a gaming cycle, what we are referring to is how long can the game last before a new game comes out? For example, Call of Duty. Call of Duty has the cycle where a new game comes out every year. It doesn't matter if it's Warzone, DMZ, or any other Call of Duty. Back back in the day when we got the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4 and then we have Modern Warfare 2. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and then the following year I believe we got the, the sequel, the Modern Warfare 2. Okay. So those two were year by year. And then we have another one, Call of Duty Black Ops 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And then we have Warzone. We have the new one, the Modern Warfare 2019. And then, then we have the Modern Warfare 2, the new one. 
Now we're gonna have a 2023 War uh, Modern Warfare 3. Apparently, is what it's gonna be called. So it's gonna be every year. So what is the longevity when it comes to an indie game? Now, the longevity of an indie game will be until the developer stops putting any new content for the consumers to enjoy. This means no more new levels, no more new content, no more new um, cosmetics, no more new stuff. Okay, once the stuff is done, that's it. That's the entire game for you to play with, okay? It's just like us playing To the Moon. To the Moon, a very good game, by the way. The only, the only thing you get to do there is finish the game. That's it. There's no nothing else. There's no bonus content. The game is the game. It, that's it. Okay. Can we draw a conclusion based on data from VG Insights? So before we get into the answer, let's get into VG Insights to understand this concept. So first, let's talk about a triple A game like Call of Duty. How how does it fare against player number in terms of percentages when it comes to player count and player retention? For Call of Duty Season Three, the new one, we have a 79,089 people playing as of one hour ago. As if there is recording, and 88,887 as far as far as their 24-hour peak. That one time of 24 hours, they had a peak of over 888,887. Okay. However, their positive rating is 61%. That means for every 10 reviews, four four of them are negative. In terms of like um, percentages. The revenue is 597.4 million, and you can contribute to that, attribute to that, the microtransactions, pay to win stuff, and any other microtransactions that come with Call of Duty. Okay? So, what is the percentage from their active players to their 24 hour peak? Around 94%, if we do the math. 94, 93%. It's not bad. But there's a reason why there's a lot of people playing. And by the way, this is not all time. But their all time is 200 something thousand. When way, way back in October 2022. When it first started. So they, they lost a lot of players already. Because of their microtransactions stuff. Now let's take a look at data for a trip for a indie game. For example, Five Nights at Freddy's. So if we take a look at Five Nights at Freddy's, we can see that 100% of the active players are also the 24-hour peak. That means 100% retention. Nearly 100% retention. This might be this might be um, outdated a little bit, but unlike Call of Duty, their positive rating is 92.4%. Like I said earlier. Like with Call of Duty, but for this time, for every 10 reviews, there are 9 reviews that are positive and 1 negative. That is a very good outcome. That is very good. Okay, the revenue is 7.6 million. Obviously, not as high as Call of Duty. But they do not care about the money. They care about the community. In this case. Because 7.6 million is great. But... It's more about the community. And you can tell the community loves Five Nights at Freddy's. With that 92.4% rating, that is very good. So now let's go back to the answer to the question. Let's go back to the question and answer it formally. Okay. Can we draw a conclusion based on data? Like, for example, VG Insights. And the, my answer for you. Is this in some aspects we can draw a conclusion that any games are starting to get be played more than a triple A game based on the current player count versus the player count at their 24 hour peak like we saw with with Five Nights at Freddy's with Five Nights at Freddy's their 24 hour peak and their current player count as of one hour ago and as of this re video recording they're at a hundred percent retention it's like your retention rating on YouTube. Now, the fifth question. 
or why are indie games getting popular? And here is how I am going to answer this. The reason why indie games are starting to get more popular over AAA games is because of the creative creativity factor. So where am I getting this answer from? If you guys remember, we did an episode a few a few podcast episodes ago about advantages of indie games versus AAA games. One of the benefits of a, a AAA of a indie game is the creativity factor because you are not pressured by a CEO. So the reason why indie games are getting popular over AAA games is because of the creativity factor. More creative gameplay elements can be added to make the game a more interactive experience for the consumer of said game. Okay, that's why it's getting more popular. Players who enjoy the game tend to have fun and leave a positive rating. And by the way, I'm going to have a review on a good game soon. Positive rating and make a trend. Okay, some of these games have been trending. Not all, however, some of them. Okay, and finally, we get to the big boy question. Are indie games the future of gaming? Okay, let's answer this in two ways. Let's think about it from two ways. Let's think about it from a consumer perspective, i.e. the customer. And then we're going to talk about the, the developer's perspective. Okay, let's talk about it from the consumer perspective. Yes, if if the game can stay long enough to have an impact, have a say, significant impact in the gaming lore and gaming history. What do I mean by this? Or what do I mean by these words? Well, let's take a look at a game like Undertale, for example. That game, if we take a look at VG Insights, if we take a look at VG Insights, this game was out 2015. So this game we came out about it's almost 10 years. Yeah, 8 years. This this game came out 8 years ago. And this game has been selling hotcakes. This game has been selling like hotcakes and pancakes. And you can tell. Okay. Now, the question again was, is it the feature of gaming? Has it stayed long enough to have a significant impact in gaming lore? And gaming history yes it has in my opinion it has because a lot of people play this game a lot of people want to play back and a lot of people replay this game there's actually a story I heard about there's a story behind this particular game that the developer it was supposed to be a last final gift I believe for his girlfriend unfortunately I believe the girlfriend passed away unfortunately so this was supposed to be the final gift who said girlfriend and that was the emotional factor and because of said emotional factor a lot of people a lot of people started playing this game he put his heart and soul into this so with that being said if we answer that question by emotional standards then yes it has but can it stay long enough so that's for the cons 
customer or consumer perspective of the future of gaming. But what about the developer side? Okay, developer side is going to be iffy because it's going to be based on how do you feel as a developer that the indie games are the future? This one is going to be a yes. Due to yes, due to the fact that a lot more special events events in the gaming space are starting to take indie games into their showcases around the world and there's a new one and there's a big one that's coming up example um there's a few examples actually i want to talk about we have indie indie best week on steam and we have the summer games summer game fest 2023 in los angeles that's actually coming up this june and i'm, I'm going to cover some of the games but you can tell that the developers are going to take their their i their um their game into these events like the summer game fest in los angeles my hometown in this year in june and then some developers will be featured on steam during their upcoming indie fest in the game fest week also happening in june so this june is going to be next month is going to be the the month where you're going to see indie games more even including a game that I have been very following very closely, Pal World. Pal World. Pal World is a an indie game that combines that combines Pokemon like mechanics and fuses it with a FPS styled game in the cartoon cartoonish art style if you guys want to see what that looks like let's have a look at it right now on Steam okay if we take a look at Power World on Steam, actually on BG Insights Forwards. Okay, so look at what look at the description of Pal World. Pal World is a brand new multiplayer open world survival crafting game where you can befriend and collect mysterious creatures called Pal in a vast world. Make your pals fight, build, farm, and work in factories. Okay, and speaking of Pal. What other game can you collect these creatures? Pokemon. Where can you befriend be creatures? Pokemon. Let's take a look on Steam. Check this out. This is Power World, folks. And I'm planning to get it. No cap. Pretty interesting, huh? This game looks adorable in a way. And yes, there's weapons in here. But I'm 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 wondering how this is gonna fear. I mean not fear, but feel. This looks legit cute. Okay? No cap. I cannot wait for this one. And look at this. There's an Indie Live Expo 2023. The newest Indie Games Assemble. And there's discounts. Yes. Expect me to start playing this stuff. On my channel. Soon. Okay. 
Look at that. All these are coming soon. All of these are indie games. All of them. At least on this section. I am I am excited to cover some of these. Okay. It's from June. I believe there's a sale too right now. 519 to 526. So get on get them now. They're on sale. Okay. About back to Power World. So that's how it looks like. So that is going to do it for today's episode. I really think that indie games are starting to be the p the future of um gaming. But is it definitive? Yes and no. I would say I would say yes because a lot of people love them. Based it will be the of course it determines based on if it's popular. But a lot of them have positive ratings. Okay? But can it be sustainable? That's the biggest question. Alright? That's going to do it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed what you learned. And are, are excited to see me play more indie games for you guys. Hit that like. Hit that share. Subscribe today. And of course. Live on the indie gaming side of life. We'll see you on next week. When we talk about a lot more data. Next Next week's content is going to be a lot more articles. We're back to the article readings. Oh, and first review of my game, of the game, uh, Tape to Tape, is coming up soon. So get ready for that. Enjoy.